I'm Gopi Patel. I'm the hospital epidemiologist at the Mount Sinai Hospital and the medical director for antimicrobial stewardship for the Mount Sinai Health System. I'm an infectious diseases physician at the ICANN School of Medicine. I think it's a concern in the fact that the way it was presented originally was that even though vaccinated, nine individuals contracted COVID-19. What really should have been emphasized, and I think a lot of people have been emphasizing it since the news came out, is nine individuals were diagnosed with COVID-19, one individual had very mild disease, and the other eight were completely asymptomatic. We have to remember that professional sports teams and the entertainment industry is very different from what we do in day-to-day -day life. They're tested extremely frequently, and we may not have detected it if they didn't have those protocols in place. But what's really important, if we go back six, seven, eight months ago, individuals like this would not have been detected as asymptomatic infections. They would be pretty sick mildly sick or even hospitalized or have severe disease. And maybe in some settings they would have expired or passed away. So what's really great about this, and although it's not great for anybody to have COVID, is that this shows that these vaccines work. They all received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is a single dose vaccine, but we already know that those vaccines prevent severe disease, hospitalizations, and people passing away from COVID-19. No vaccine is 100%. So it does mean that we need to emphasize the other things that we recommend, right? So make sure everybody around you is vaccinated and practice those behaviors that we've been asking people to practice if you don't know the status of your colleagues or the individuals in your surroundings. An asymptomatic is, infection is one where you don't have traditional symptoms that have been associated with COVID-19. You don't have fever, you don't have runny nose, you don't have a cough, you don't feel, um, sort of what we would call fluey, you don't have aches or pains, you haven't lost your sense of smell, so you don't really feel sick. Um, so that's an asymptomatic infection, so not having symptoms of an infection. So I don't love the term breakthrough infections, but uh, currently breakthrough infections are infections that have been diagnosed in individuals who are two weeks or more out from their last dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. So that's 14 days or more out from one dose of the J&J &J vaccine or the Janssen vaccine. And that's two weeks or 14 days out from the second dose of either the Moderna or the Pfizer mRNA vaccines. It depends on who you're around. If you're around a lot of people in your, in your herd or your bubble that are fully vaccinated, if your whole family is vaccinated and you're aware of what kind of things they do, um, if they are practicing great behavior wearing their mask on the subways and on the buses, you should feel pretty confident that everyone's being safe. Um, remember, people could be immunocompromised and the vaccines are not 100%. So those are the patient population we really worry about with vaccines because we don't know how well they will work in that population. So if you have someone um, that you're visiting and they're vaccinated, but they have some underlying condition, it's probably best for you to mask and for them to mask too. Um, so it depends on where you are. If you're at the grocery store, I would still recommend masking um, because you don't know what's going on around you and you don't really know right now who's vaccinated and who's not. Again, we still are exploring and learning more about how this is transmitted amongst vaccinated individuals. So in the case of the Yankees, um, we don't know. They did get the J&J &J vaccine that is not as highly effective as the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine in preventing symptomatic infections. Again, 100% effective at preventing serious infections and hospitalizations and death. But we need to know, was this a specific variant of concern or a variant of interest? Was there... Um, almost what we used to refer to as a super spreader event. Was there a gathering or an outing? Were they indoors where this could have been spread from person to person? So we hope to learn more. Um, and I'm sure this is being investigated fully. I'm sure someone is trying to figure out if this was due to a variant or some other um, situation. But I think again, it's reassuring that no one was really very sick. So I can't really tell you if you should be worried about vac yeah, a breakthrough infection. Um, but I do think it will not be a severe infection if you are fully vaccinated. 
So I think that's one of the things we always need to be concerned about. Our kids, depending on how old they are, if they're less than 12, may not be eligible to be vaccinated for a little bit longer. So we need to make sure we keep them safe. Um, I think one of the things is, remember, you're coming home to someone who is not vaccinated or you're interacting with someone who can't be vaccinated at this time. So you do need to sort of model the behaviors you've been asking them to model. So if your child is wearing a mask outdoors because they have to because they're not vaccinated, I always say it's best to model the behavior you want them to model. I'm the parent of a seven year old. So when she is wearing her mask, I'm wearing mine. So I think it's always really important to remember this is a global pandemic. And with planes, trains, automobiles, people come in and people go out. And so we do need to make sure we are helping other parts of the world that may not have as great access to vaccines get vaccinated. And I think we've done a really good job of sharing the wealth with other countries, but we still have some more work to do. Um, I think a lot of us have families in other countries that we're concerned about. So as I said before, encouraging individuals to get vaccinated, even if it's not a vaccine that's available here in the United States, the WHO has a list of vaccines that they have endorsed for emergency use. Please encourage others to get vaccinated. It really is one of the things that's going to help this world get back to normal. I think it's really important to share your vaccine story. It's important for people to hear from people that have their shared experience, whether it's the community where you live, you know, other parents that you, you speak to, um, you know, family members or caretakers, for example, nannies or babysitters, people that you interact with, help them come to a decision that's right for them, but really point them in the direction where they're getting the best information to answer their questions. Social media has been very interesting during this pandemic. It's readily accessible, but doesn't always tell us what we really need to know. So please direct them either to our website, the CDC, the New York State Department of Health or the New York City Departments of Health and Mental Hygiene to get the best information and the most current information about these vaccines.